Harry, you've got some explaining to do. What's this I hear about you getting married? Is that true? We've only been divorced for three years. You've got to be out of your mind. What's wrong with you? What the... Sarah? What do you care? It's not your business anymore. Of course it's my business. This new wife of yours, her name's Juno, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I'm not sure how you'd know that. Don't underestimate me. I hired a private detective to follow your every move. Obviously, I know your wife's name. Oh, and just to let you know, all the money I paid to hire that private detective, as well as all the money I'll be spending now once I hired a lawyer. A uh, lawyer? I think it'll come to just about $100,000. So I would recommend you take any steps you need to take to have that much cash on hand as soon as possible. $100,000? Okay, I know private detectives and lawyers can be pricey devils, but $100,000? There's no way you spent that much. That includes damages. Damages? But damages for what? Uh, you're really dense, aren't you? Don't worry, you'll see all the details once our lawyers reach a settlement. Settlement? Wait, you're gonna sue me? Oh, now you understand what's going on. I'm glad you finally decided to open your eyes. Yes, I'm gonna sue you. And yes, I'm gonna take you to the cleaners. Hold on, what the hell are you gonna sue me for? We've been divorced for three years now, and we haven't even spoken but once or twice in that time. You just admitted everything. You're getting remarried. So, I'm suing you. Get the picture? I have every right to sue you for that. Are you drunk or something? Whatever. If you're just going to text me to harass me like this, I'm going to block your number. That's fine with me. My lawyers will be contacting you shortly. Just let me give you one word of warning. If you do anything to bother my wife, you're going to regret it big time. Got it? Hey, Harry, do you have a minute? Hey, Gina, sure. What's up? I just checked the mail, and I found this weird envelope inside. Weird envelope? Weird how? Well, it's addressed to you, and it says it's from someone named Sarah. That's your ex-wife's name, isn't it? Oh no. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, and the weird thing is, there's no stamp on it. Plus, our address isn't even written on it, so I think she must have delivered it personally. Oh my god. Is it okay if I open it to see what's inside? Yeah, I guess that would be for the best. Well, I hate to push this on you since the issues between me and my ex don't concern you, but depending on what's inside, I might just have to act quickly, so yeah, go ahead and open it. It doesn't have to be now though, just whenever you have time. Got it. I'll let you know once I've read it. Thanks, Juno. And I'm sorry about getting you involved in this. Okay, well, I read through everything. What did it say? Long story short, she says you had no right to get remarried only three years after we got divorced. Your doing so has caused me immeasurable pain and suffering. To compensate me for my pain and suffering, I'm suing you for the damages in the amount of $100,000. You must wire the entire amount into my bank account by the end of this month, or I will take you to court. And that's the gist of it anyway. That's... <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. Like, at all. Plus, I'm 100% positive that she hasn't spoken to a real lawyer about this. Not only is it uh, legally nonsensical, it also looks like it was written by a sixth grader. Uh, she misspelled at least one word in each sentence, and that's just the ones where she actually used punctuation. 
she also wrote you instead of you. The whole thing is just a ten-page mess. Wait a minute, she wrote ten pages? Yeah, most of the pages were just her complaining about things you supposedly did or said to her when you were married. And another big chunk wasn't any specific complaint. She was just insulting you. The most important thing as far as I could tell was that she wants to see you for a hundred grand. Well, what am I gonna do with that woman? Well, for the time being, nothing in here is legally actionable. So, I think we're safe. Just in case, we might want to talk to an actual lawyer, though. One of my friends is married to a lawyer, so... If you want, I could call her and try to set up a meeting. That sounds like it'd probably be a good idea. Would you mind setting that up for us? Sure thing. Give me a little time to try and get in touch with her. I'll let you know what she says later. Hey Harry, great news. I called my friend and she says her husband is open up this afternoon. I'm gonna head over right now. Wow, that was fast. It's weird that he was free. I thought lawyers were typically really busy. He is, but apparently his client for the afternoon canceled last minute and he said I could stop by any time. <laughs> Jeez, what a lucky break. Uh, tell him and your friend I said thank you. And also, again, do you know, I'm really sorry that all of this had to happen while I was out of town on business. Don't worry about it. You're coming on tomorrow right on schedule, right? Yeah, as of right now, I don't see anything coming up that would keep me here any longer than I planned. Okay, well, I think if it's okay with you, I'll stay the night at my parents' house just to be safe. Yeah, go ahead. Let me know if anything comes up. Will do. I'm gonna go pack some stuff. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Love you too, Jenna. Take care. What's the big idea, Harry? Why haven't you sent my money yet? I put my bank account information in the letter I sent you, so you've got no excuse. Either pay it by the end of the month, or I'll see you in court. Did you actually think a stunt like that was going to work? It's not a stunt. I'm exercising my legal rights to compensation for pain and suffering. Oh yeah, alright. Oh, tell me, how did you come up with that hundred thousand dollar figure? That's how much pain and suffering you cost me. And did you ever think to consult with a real lawyer before sending me that letter? Why should I? I'll take that as a no then. So what did you base that number on? Do you have any court precedents that you can cite? Maybe a civil statute? I already told you, when I thought about how much you hurt me, it felt like $100,000. That reminds me, exactly what sort of pain and suffering did I actually cause you? You were married just three years after our divorce. That's like cheating. Okay, it seems we have a definition problem here. My wife Gina and I met and started dating after we got divorced. So no, it's not like cheating at all. Because once we're divorced, it's no longer any concern of yours who I choose to meet, date, or marry. <laughs> it looks like you're the one who needs a legal reason, Harry. It's so pathetic that you didn't know this. <laughs> Legally, if you date another person within three years of getting divorced, that's considered cheating. But you just didn't stop at dating. You actually married your mistress. That took the damages up a few notches. What on earth are you talking about? Oh my god, you are thick. Let me say it again slowly this time. If you get married within three years of getting divorced, that's cheating. Hey, you know what? I think I know what your confusion is here. I think what you're referring to is the statute of limitations on suing your spouse for adultery. If you discover within three years of a divorce that your former spouse was cheating during your marriage, then you can sue them for adultery. Is that what this is about? I don't get it. How am I wrong about this? 
I really have no idea how you managed to misinterpret such plain legal language as that. But in any case, my wife consulted with a lawyer, you know, a person who does this sort of thing professionally, and he confirmed that, no, you don't have any standing to sue me like you're trying to. No way. I don't believe you. How come you guys got to talk to a lawyer, but none of the lawyers I went to would give me the time of the day? Sounds like you went around to a bunch of different law offices then, huh? Yeah, I did. This is so unfair. No matter what I said to any of the lawyers I went to, none of them would help me at all. It sounds like they could see from a mile away that there was no way representing you would end up well for them. But how could they know that? Already went over this, so allow me to repeat myself. I met Juno, started dating her, proposed to her, and married her, all after the two of us got divorced. There are no legal grounds here to sue me for infidelity. We were no longer together. But the law says I can. What did the lawyers you talked to tell you? They must have given you some response. But seriously, this isn't even that difficult of legalese. It's practically layman's terms. Uh, and I shouldn't have to remind you about this, but you were the one who was unfaithful during our marriage. So you've really got some gall to try and sue me for getting remarried after we divorced. Wait, what? Harry, what's going on here? Why did I just get a big stack of papers from your lawyer? Ah, uh, so I take it you were successfully served then? Served? What do you mean served? What is this? I just so happened to discover that you had been unfaithful during our marriage. So I'm exercising my legal right to sue you for damages. That's all. What? I wasn't unfaithful. We got divorced because we weren't just meant for each other. We had different values. We liked different things. We never got along. Yeah, that's definitely part of the story. I thought that was all there was to it too. So at first I felt that going our separate ways would be the best thing for both of us. However, when I looked through that 10-page screed you put in my mailbox, in the midst of all the grammatical and spelling mistakes and nonsensical legal theories, there were a few passages that caught my attention. Remember the part where you were comparing me to another guy you had met toward the end of our marriage? That got me suspicious that maybe there was more to our divorce than I first thought. Oh. You're still seeing the same guy, aren't you? The guy who works part-time at a local factory? You did me the favour of including your current address when you put that envelope in my mailbox. Thanks for that. It is easy to hire a private detective of my own to check into you. I come to find out the supposedly single occupant apartment you live in is actually owned by a man. And he also learned that you were frequently going in and out of that apartment while we were still married. It wasn't long after he found out that that he got exactly what he needed. Hard proof that you were having an affair. This can't be happening. Not only am I not getting money out of you, but now you're the one who's going to get money from me? By the way, I'm not the only one who's getting money from you. The guy whose apartment you're living in is married. He's got a wife and kids in another city. Oh my god, please tell me you didn't tell her. I'm happy to report that I did, in fact, inform her of everything. She said she's going to divorce her husband and sue for full custody of the kids, so he'll have to pay her child support and you'll have to pay her damages for knowingly sleeping with her husband. What are you trying to do? Destroy me? I also told your parents. Oh, come on. They told me to tell you they're disowning you. They never want to hear from you again, and they won't give you any help with your impending legal troubles. How could you do this to me? You're a scumbag, Harry. Oh, I'm the scumbag. Me? Is this fun for you? Ruining my relationship with my boyfriend? I wouldn't really call it fun, but I suppose you could say I'm getting a sense of satisfaction with seeing to it that someone like you gets what they deserve. You jerk! Creep! You're not going to be satisfied until my life is totally destroyed, are you? I wouldn't say destroyed, no. I'm just ensuring that any and all responsible parties take responsibility for the consequences of their own actions. That's all. But how can you sue me when we've been divorced for three years? I'm sorry, weren't you paying attention to our conversation yesterday? I told you that if infidelity is discovered within three years of a divorce, the wronged spouse can sue for damages. Scroll up if you want. I told you all this before. And since technically three years haven't passed yet, I'm still well within my rights to sue. 
You're just doing this for money, aren't you? <laughs> and what were you after when you tried to build me out of a hundred thousand dollars? Screw you! Got nothing, eh? That's fine. If you'd like to learn more about infidelity laws, try asking one of the lawyers you spoke to before. I said screw you, you money-grubbing snake! <laughs> Call me what you wish, Sarah. But I can't have you meddling in my affairs anymore. You caused a great deal of trouble for me and my wife. I decided that the only way you would learn to stay away from us is if I hit you hard and as fast as I could. I'll break up with my boyfriend, okay? That'll solve everything, won't it? It's far too late for that, Sarah. Even if you break up with him now, it won't change the fact that you're going to have to fork up some cash to me and your boyfriend's wife. Seriously? You've got to be kidding me. Oh, and with that, I think I'll take my leave from this conversation. Talking with you is like bashing my head against a brick wall, giving me a headache. No, no, no! You are not going to run away from me like this! Coward! <laughs> Man, you remind me of the Black Knight scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> All right, yeah, so look, a lawyer will be speaking with you soon, so I suggest you do what he tells you to. Wait, Harry, can we talk about this? <laughs> nope. Bye. I've been doing a lot of thinking about my relationship with my ex-wife lately. At the time, I justified our divorce to myself by saying it was because of a difference in values, but now, however, I actually kind of think that the real reason is just that my ex-wife was really, really, really dumb. And I mean, look, this isn't to say that I'm some kind of Albert Einstein or anything, but man, yeah, that's all there is to say. She's just a complete ignoramus. After that last text exchange, the wife of my ex-wife's boyfriend launched a lawsuit against the two of them. Apparently, her lawyer showed up to my ex-wife's apartment just as mine was leaving. Both of our lawsuits were for a lump sum payment, leaving the adulterous couple completely penniless. As her boyfriend never did have much of what could be considered a career, she's now working two jobs in order to keep their finances above water. Funny story. The other day... My ex-wife actually sent me a text message begging me to take her back. I was at a loss for words, so I didn't even respond. I just blocked her and went about my day. The last thread connecting the two of us is that she knows my current address, but we're moving within the month in order to remedy that. It'll be nice to finally be free from her, you know, three years after our divorce. Tam, you're getting married. Wait, Laura? It's been a while. Who did you hear about the wedding from? Why? Is it an inconvenience if I know? Well, not really. I was just wondering why you're texting me all of a sudden. I heard from Leah. I ran into her the other day. She asked me if I was going to your wedding, but I said of course not. It's a waste of time inviting me to the wedding. What? A wedding for a boring woman like you? It's such a drag, I don't feel like going. Your fiancé's ugly anyway, right? You text me out of the blue... And that's how you talk to me? Sorry. Was I spot on about your husband? <laughs> it's not like that. Why are you texting me? If you just wanted to tell me that, I'm really busy, so can we be done with this? What are you talking about? You're having an attitude towards me. Aren't you being a little cocky? You're such a boring person. Who's the one that desperately stole a boyfriend from that boring person? Huh? I wasn't desperate. Tom fell in love with me, so it couldn't be helped. We were dating since college, and I was thinking we would get married someday. But we broke up after three years of being together because you came between us and he cheated. That seems a little desperate. What are you talking about? I had no interest in Tom. I heard from the others after that. You were after Tom since college. I heard you tell Tom to break up with me every time you guys would have a party. I don't know what you're talking about. That was a long time ago. 
Tom picked me. If you want to think that, go ahead. You sound a little stuck up. Well, you just tell yourself that. You're the loser in life. Excuse me? What do you mean, loser? I don't know what kind of person you're marrying. But if you say he's hotter and has a better salary than Tom, there is no way that's true. Besides, I'm engaged to Tom. Really? Congratulations. So I'm the winner. You lost. I don't know who won or lost, but that doesn't matter, does it? You and I are happy, so let's leave it at that. There's no reason to fight. I want you to realize that you lost. Just because you got married a little earlier than I did, doesn't mean you get to brag about it. I'm marrying someone like Tom. And that's not it. I have others, too. What? Others? An attractive woman like me can't settle with one guy. Tom is perfect husband material, but I have others, just in case. I'm going to quit when I get married, but life is better if you have fun, right? So you're dating Tom, but you're seeing other men? Just hanging out. The way of thinking of someone like me might be a little difficult for you. I don't know what you mean. And Tom would never do that. You shouldn't betray him like that. You still work. What? Yeah, I still work. Jeez, you can't quit. I don't plan on quitting. I love my job. I plan on working even after I get married. No way. What? Is your future husband's salary that small? What? Isn't that why you still have to work after you get married? I feel bad for you. It's not like that. Ugly and low income. You poor thing. <laughs> I wish I could share some of my happiness with you. I don't really understand. You don't understand? I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Has your mental capacity been diminished from working too hard? <laughs> I feel sorry for you. Isn't it hard when your spouse earns so little? Anyway, good luck with your ugly husband. Hey, it seems like you're misunderstanding something. My fiancé is a doctor. What? Do you know what I do for a living? I'm a nurse. Are you really? I knew you were in the medical field. Yeah, I'm a nurse. Not many people actually quit when they get married. And I want to continue working. A doctor? Yeah. You've been saying that he doesn't earn a lot. But he easily earns more than a regular office worker. You're marrying a doctor? Yes. I don't care that much about money. Because I make enough money myself. Not that it matters to you. But even if he has a lot of money, he must be ugly, right? He must be crazy. He's a little weird, isn't he? That's not a nice thing to say. Here. That's my fiancé. This? An actor? No, my fiancé. But thank you for the kind words. Wait, huh? No way. Why is he so good looking? If he's a doctor, he must have a good background and a good salary. Why you? I don't know. But I've never looked at him like that. I can't believe it. That can't be. Why you? Comparing yourself to others like that and only caring about status is probably why nobody chose you. Never mind. I'll go to your wedding then. What? Other doctors are coming, right? There's rarely a chance to meet doctors. What about Tom? Tom? Compared to a doctor, he's nothing. I want to marry a doctor too. A guy that's hotter than your fiancé and a doctor who's rich. That's who I'm going to find. Introduce me. 
My wedding? I didn't even invite you. What? The wedding is in two weeks. I sent out all of the invitations. And they RSVP'd. What? What about me? I didn't get one. I told you I didn't send you one. Why should someone I don't consider a friend be invited to such a special day? <laughs> Wait a second. Didn't you invite your other friends? Yeah? They're my friends. They've never stolen a boyfriend from me. Wait. Are you still mad about Tom? I'm not mad anymore, but I haven't forgiven you. Don't say that. Oh, I have an idea. Let's switch. Huh? I'll give you back Tom. So, give me your fiancé. We can kill two birds with one stone. I don't understand. There's no way I can do that. If you just think rationally. Why not? You should be happy I'm giving Tom back to you. You don't have to give him back to me. Tom's been asking to get back together since the day we broke up. What? What the hell? When you're pressuring Tom to go out with you. Tom couldn't decline because he was too drunk. He ended up going out with you because he felt guilty. And he's been calling me many times because he regrets it. I've never heard that. He's never told me that. Oh, I said no because I had just started going out with my boyfriend. But I think it's for the best. Tom was never serious about you. And you've been seeing other men, so it works for both of you. I'm serious. Then why are you seeing other people? I'm just playing around before I get married. I told Tom that, by the way. What? Tom is my ex. But we've been good friends since college. I told Tom everything you just told me. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're joking, right? I'm not joking. I don't lie, unlike somebody. Say that it was a misunderstanding. Tell him it was just a misunderstanding. If it was really a misunderstanding, tell him yourself. I can't do anything about it. I can't believe it. Why would you do this? That's my line. <laughs> I even forgot about the horrible thing you did to me. You texted me out of the blue. So I was surprised. And it was just to brag. You also judged my fiancé without ever meeting him. You can see your awful personality through these texts. Don't say that. I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. Please, straighten things out with Tom. I don't want to break up with him. I bet you don't. You've been in love with him since college, right? That's why you've always had it out for me. But you shouldn't have betrayed me. What? So things are finished between me and Tom? No, please help me. It's not my problem anymore. So will you stop bothering me? I definitely didn't invite you to my wedding. So don't ever show your face again. Tam told Tom what happened, and Tom broke up with Laura. Laura asked to talk things out with Tom, but Tom had a feeling Laura was cheating on him, and thanks to Tam's intervention, that feeling was proven right. He broke things off immediately. Tam's friends from college got together for the wedding, but Laura was not invited, and she regretted things after seeing pictures on Instagram. After that, Laura was so focused on finding a better husband than Tam's that she's still single, even at 40. Tam now has two children and has gone back to work and is doing great, both at home and at work.